Hey there, it's Patricia Young, and I just wanted to take a couple minutes and drop in. As some of you may have known, I just got back from an eight-day silent retreat at a Zen monastery, and I had posted a little bit before I left. And not only was the experience absolutely amazing and transformational, it really brought home to me how important self-compassion is. And I specialize in working with highly sensitive people, and I know that as highly sensitive people, we're deep thinkers, we process, we feel things very deeply. And so I've talked about my gremlins and how often they come up. What I learned at this retreat, and it was really kind of fascinating, is uh, I feel a little bit vulnerable saying this. I'm imagining people going like, well, yeah, duh. You know, everybody has these, what I call gremlins, we can call them voices, that are constantly on us telling us what we're not doing right. If you only worked harder, if you worked more, if you worked less, if you were thinner, if you were fatter, if you had a better job, if you had a degree, if you owned a house, if you were married, if you had children. I mean, whatever it is, we constantly have these voices that are telling us what's wrong with us. And it may not even be very loud. I know for me, I really struggle with how much work I do. It feels like no matter what I do, it's never enough. I can spend the whole day working and you know, the voices, the gremlins tell me that I didn't do enough, I'm not working hard enough, I'm not focused enough. And I've, I've always talked about self-compassion and I knew that it was important. But after coming back from this retreat, I really had like, I feel like I've had, you know, the information from my head up and I've been practicing to the extent that I could. I really got that integration of like the head, the body all connected. And I feel like I'm able to um, talk from a, an experiential level now I think it's not uncommon for me. I had to stay in my head to survive. It was not safe to be in my feelings. And it's a highly sensitive person. We feel things very deeply. So mm, that was challenging. But the role of self-compassion and having compassion for ourselves and being exactly where we're at is so important. And I, I think that what happens is we get these messages that who we are is not okay. And we make these decisions that we're not going to show our sensitivity or we're not going to show our vulnerability or we're not going to show our neediness because we needed to do that to survive when we were younger. We kind of distance from an authentic part of ourselves and then we end up hating that part of ourselves. And I, I shared this, I think in episode, it's bonus episode, maybe 49, I'm not sure where I talk about dropping my husband's dry cleaning off at the dry cleaner. He asked me to just drive the van around the block and then he was going to drive again and he's much taller than I am and I didn't want to change the mirrors in the seat and the emergency flashers were on and so you know I'm perched on the edge of the seat like reaching to get to the gas pedal and I can't figure out where to turn the flashers off and I call him and he doesn't pick it up and I ended up getting really worked up and then I got upset that I was upset and then I judged that I was upset and I just released a podcast episode I think episode bonus episode 49 about like when you have challenges this is what you do and so now I'm feeling like a fraud and I'm upset and you know so I think that it's not uncommon that we have these kinds of experiences and in the moment I was able to talk to my husband when he got back in the van about why I got upset but it was very hard for me to have like compassion for the reactions that I had and then the reactions on the reactions and I'm really starting to understand that we're going to have the responses that we have. We're going to have the feelings that we have. And when we can find that loving kindness for ourselves and to give ourselves grace, that's really where the healing begins. And we don't want to have perfect. I mean, for me, the goal is not to have a perfect life. It's not to have a, bis a blissful life. The goal for me is about being able to be with any situation when it comes up to feel whatever's going on, to figure out what I do, what I need to do to move through that situation and to have a tremendous amount of love and compassion and gentleness for myself. And I, I think culturally we have this idea and this belief that we need to be hard on ourselves. And if we don't, you know, beat ourselves up and if you don't get to the gym, you're going to be lazy and you're going to gain weight. And if you don't monitor yourself. So for everybody that's been doing that, how does that work? You know, I have that, like, you need to work harder, you need to work longer, whatever I do doesn't feel like it's enough. It's not about the work, it's about having love and gentleness and compassion for the sweet, precious human being that is inside that needs love and care. And often we talk with people about, like, if you had a child, would you talk to a child the way that you talk to yourself or your best friend? You know, I, I think it's so common for us to have these 
thoughts of not enough or too much or if only we did this or you know you're taking too long or you need to hurry up or you're not being neat enough you're not being thorough enough you're not being organized enough whatever our history is about we run those tapes through our head constantly and there's no way that we would talk to anybody else that way and so i really am just experiencing this the importance of really having that that gentleness that love and compassion for the tender, caring little spirit that's inside all of us. And so a lot of my work now, I'm really going to be bringing this sense of self-compassion into it. And I really learned some amazing tools about how to really show up and be present for myself when I struggle. And I came back from the retreat, you know, what I say is like all kumbaya and namaste. And um, that was great for a few days. And then last night and this morning, a lot of the same issues came up struggling for me about feeling restless and disconnected and feeling like I wasn't doing enough and needing something and not really knowing what that was. And in the past, I really, I've, I've done the best that I can to manage, but I really feel like I came home with some new tools and a new perspective on how to work with those things when they come up. It's not to get rid of them. It's just learning to ways to be with it and to and the stuff, the suffering that I experienced as a human, the suffering like when I got mad at myself for the van thing, you know, and then I got mad at myself for being mad, and then I went into judgment, then I went to, you know, that's suffering. And we really don't have to suffer. We have things that come up in life that may be uncomfortable, but we really do have the ability to sit with that and to find grace for ourselves and compassion. So just wanted to drop in and give you some information. If you don't know, I have a podcast called Unapologetically Sensitive. If you want to find any information about the podcast, you can go to unapologeticallysensitive.com. Remember, sensitivity is nothing to apologize for. It's our superpower. Have a blessed day.